Hi there, on this video I'm going to be sharing with you what could possibly cause Parkinson's disease, how to possibly prevent it and how hydrogen therapy can ha also help. So I, my name's Tony, I'm a co-founder of H2E, we've specialised in hydrogen therapy in the UK since 2017. I've been interested in natural healthcare since an early age. Um, at 14, I got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. At the age of 35, got diagnosed with um, cancer of the whole large intestine. Um, now I'm coming up to 51 years old, uh, healthy. I've been with my life partner now for nine years. We've got two healthy kids and li living a pretty good life. And um, I'm not a medical do doctor, so I'm not giving medical advice, but what I can tell you is that Parkinson's disease is an absolutely horrible disease, like, like many others, and if it can be prevented, that is worth a video, and that, that's what I'm sharing, sharing here. So let's, let's start off. So only 5% of people who get Parkinson's disease, it's through, through genes. Um, but 95% of people who get Parkinson's later on in life, sadly it's due to um, poor lifestyle decisions, lifestyle habits, and this is the part we go, well, what can we do about it? In the UK, there's 165,000 people at present who are diagnosed and suffering from Parkinson's disease. Every single year in the UK, there are 17,000 new diagnoses of, of Parkinson's. My, my late dear gran, who, who's now passed, she, she had Parkinson's disease. And from an onlooker, um, it's like my grand's there, but I'm kind of losing her as she's alive. Um, she was a real food lover. And, um, you, know, you know, she lost her sense of smell. She uh, lost, lost her senses of, um, you know, the facial expressions. Um, she had this excessive tiredness, her, her memory was going. Um, so there's, there was tremors and shaking and there's a whole load of symptoms with Parkinson's that you, you just feel like you're losing a person in front of you. Um, and so it, but my question is, as is like upstream. So everything which is upstream, which is preventative healthcare, that's interesting to me. Downstream is that actually having the, the condition Parkinson's. So upstream, you say, well, what's causing Parkinson's? What's possibly causing it? So baked into the cake already will be things like air pollution, forever chemicals, heavy metals, microplastics. And sadly, um, it's already in our environment and it's very hard to get away from. So we have to kind of park that to the side, but we, we say to ourselves, well, what can we do? What can we can control and what things are causing more oxidative stress and damage in the cells. And what we do know for certain is that certain foods like ultra processed foods, seed oils, um, excessive sugar in our diet, poor sleep, poor stress management, all of these factors increase something called ROS or oxidative stress. And it's useful to know that one of the causes of Parkinson's is understanding too much oxidative stress in the cell. So let me explain it, let me explain more. So inside the cell, you have the mitochondria, which if you go back to science at school, you know the mitochondria is the powerhouse or the engine of the cell. It will convert food, into fuel and the fuel is called ATP. And when the cell makes ATP, it goes through 11 steps. And on every single step 
of making ATP, the cell produces more oxidative stress. You have to think of it like a car. A car has an exhaust and the waste product is coming out the exhaust. The waste product of cellular energy is oxidative stress. So th this is normal and it's natural and it's not a problem. But when you understand that when there's a backlog, so if there's, as I said before, excess sugar, excess proce processed foods, alcohol, smoking, all of these things that are causing uh, like a, a backlog of oxidative stress, the, the cell will get to a point where it goes, oh God, I'm completely overworked, overburdened. And just as a car, if you take a car and you don't service it or clean the engine, eventually it starts sort of breaking down a little bit. Same with the cell. It will either stop working so well or it will shut down. And what's so fantastic about hydrogen is hydrogen comes along, cleans the oxidative stress, so it's like cleaning the engine. And the body already has a, a natural well, way to clean the um, oxidative stress from the cell, which is called antioxidants. So the body already makes its own antioxidants, glutathione, SOD, and in our foods are things like flavonoids and vitamin C and vitamin E. And there's many antioxidants that help clear this um, oxidative stress. What's interesting is if you look at the, um, um, the makeup of any molecule for any antioxidant, for example, vitamin C, you will see lots of hydrogen molecules in it. And it's part of the reason why vitamin C works. Each antioxidant does something different on top, but it's the hydrogen does one thing. It reduces um, oxidative stress and it simply turns it back into water. So understanding you don't want to overburden the cell. This is like the lesson number one, don't overburden it. Um, the problem is once the cell starts shutting down, the cell is supposed to you know, take glucose from the blood, take it into the cell and turn it into energy. If the cell's not working, then the glucose is floating around the blood system. Then you will have excessive glucose and excessive insulin in the blood system, and that's not healthy. And many people know about, oh, you, you can get a fatty liver through too much alcohol consumption. But what many people don't know is you can also get a fatty liver by having too much glucose and too much insulin in, in, in the blood system as well. So everything should be in its right place and working the right way. And once things start breaking down, you start getting these knock-on effects. And what we want to go, oh, how do you stop these knock-on effects? The second thing, so we've got glucose and insulin in the blood system. The second thing in the cell is there's something called APP. It's a normal protein in the cell and it does a certain job. Completely natural. But the problem is when the cell isn't working, the, the APP needs to be um, um, contained in a solution of the cell. And you need energy, ATP, to keep it there. So if you haven't got the ATP, this APP starts saying, well, it will either get disfragmented into the blood system or when the cell starts duplicating, you, you get also um, fragments of this APP in the, the, the blood system. APP is great in the cell, but it's not good in the blood system because this APP protein turns into something called amyloid plaque. It's this plaque that starts causing this chronic inflammation in the brain. And this is where uh, the health problem starts cascading. We start very simple with the cell not working. Now we've got the glucose, we've got the insulin, we've got the APP. Then on top of that, if a person has um, high levels of stress or cortisol, which is often the case because you're in a stressed state with dealing with a health issue, 
you have at the moment an energy deficiency so that the, the cell isn't making enough energy then you have an over demand because cortisol burns more energy than normal so it just keeps compounding the problem then on top of that the cell which is doing the original job which is getting rid of cell waste and making energy just starts shutting down so what we need to think about is like okay upstream what can we do about it this is what's causing it so what we found and what we know for certain is that if you're breathing hydrogen or drinking hydrogen water you're keeping on top of reducing this ROS or oxidative stress and we're stopping it building up it's not the whole picture you know hydrogen does one thing extremely well but what I've been learning all these years is how to stack and put things together so if you've got a, still eating a high sugary diet you're still overloading the system so it's putting all the, the common sense preventative measures in whether it's a low carb diet or a slight keto diet or even a Mediterranean diet it's about improving gut health it's about improving sleep it's it's stress management it's cutting out these processed foods and seed oils and and replacing um, normal white sugar with monk sugar and or stevia or um, there's there's other versions of health, healthy sugars once you've got all of that structure in the, the chances of increasing preventative preventing Parkinson's downstream goes up considerably and all of these things that I'm saying are proven it's all common sense stuff and it's like it's just switching on that switch um, sadly when Parkinson's progresses and um, you've, you've got all this amyloid plaque in, in the brain it's very hard to, to treat and in that stage it's like okay hydrogen therapy can reduce the oxidative stress but there's so much damage done that it, it's rever irreversible at that stage but and that's why I'm passionate really about this preventative health what can you do what can you switch on it's not a case of being asleep and going oh I deal with it when I, I, I get it I've had so many hard lessons in life with health issues that it's like um, prevent preventative medicine is the best medicine and if you can do something quietly in the background which what hydrogen therapy does keeps reducing this ROS oxidative stress keeps the cell clean you've done one thing extremely well so this is how to sort of prevent um, and help people help, help get this statistic hopefully lower so that is the whole picture of Parkinson's and how hydrogen can help. Thanks for listening. Cheers, guys.